Could you get your binoculars out? We're going to go bird watching. As in this bird. So rude. Which I got from the Tate Ooh. in London. That's uh, somewhere else. London garlic. Cheep, cheep, cheep. The bird. Naughty. I was about to make a dumb tit joke. Then I thought better of it because obscene. I'm too old to be cancelled. We're going to be looking for some rare birds, some national birds, some postage stamp birds. Birds that like the water, birds that like chips. Birds that like ripping the entrails from animals. Some real mother duckers. I'm going to make that duck joke a couple of times. But mostly, these. Yes, here today, you and I, we're going to dig into a little piece of my writing. If you've read it, not read it, had me read it to you, it doesn't really matter. Because today we're speaking the universal language of the one finger salute, the bird. Not that bird. Not that bird either. This is not my bird. Definitely not that bird. <laughs> no, like I said, this one. But before we even get to talking about uh, how to clear creative blocks by simply releasing the bird from the birdcage of your hand, let's talk about why people find it so scandalous. Not really scandalous, it's more offensive. I'm offended. This reads in any language. Short answer? I don't know. I mean, I, I did some of my usual, like... Tippity type, why do people? Long story short, it started with the usual suspects, the Greeks. I don't know, it's all Greek to me. I read this one thing about how they developed this phallic gesture. Oh, scandalous. As a way of taunting people, as a way to offend and literally poke each other. The article said literally, and um, I don't think I want to delve into what that means with the poking of the finger. This is clean entertainment. It's good, clean fun. <laughs> no, it's not. While it might mean, fuck you. Now, back then, it was more rude, more sexual in nature. Cheep, cheep, cheep. It represented the phallus, the Johnson, the old todger. The willy, you know, the pee pee. And we saw your Frank and beans. Back in ye oldy Greeky times, it represented an erect. Erect. I don't even need to finish that sentence. Fill in the blanks. There are even instances of people giving the one finger salute in Greek theatre. Gosh, Bruce. Greek is still Greek to me. In the Slate article I read, and let the butchery of the names begin, in the Aristophanes, Aristophanes play, The Clouds, the character Strepsiades, Strepsiades, extends his middle finger in an obscene gesture at my man Socrates. Love me some Socrates. Then raises his phallus. Oh, so he does the gesture and then, oh. Make some beans. TMI. So that's the Greeks. The Romans, they culturally appropriated the gesture. They called the middle finger digitus impudicus. He has a wife, you know. Which means the uh, impudent finger. I know stuff. So then I thought, okay, well, that's, that's how the gesture originated. Why is it called flipping the bird? You love that bird, don't you? Dear viewer, I was unable to find a satisfactory answer. I found some answers. I just didn't like them. They're boring. I fell asleep in the middle of them. Ugh. Boring. <laughs> but let me just tell them my guess. The leap that they made was... Uh, for a long time in history, the Brits Please maintain standards. would express their displeasure at the theatre by either hooting like an owl or honking like an angry goose. Two birds. It was kind of the equivalent of booing. I mean, super mature. Mature? The goose thing got more popular than the owl, I guess, and that became a saying in itself, to goose someone. Talk to me, goose. Not like 
goose, the buttocks, but like, you know, <clears throat> express your displeasure by making your honking Honk. goose noises, which then led to that being called giving the big bird, not hello. And then the leap was made to like, I guess you give the big bird sound and then you accompany it with this guy. I don't know what you think, but I found it very unsatisfying. Internet let me down. Oh, actually, it wasn't the internet that let me down. It's history. History let me down. The first part makes sense. The F you, you wave your willy at someone. That's offensive. It makes sense. But the bird, it's like a honk and a hiss of dislike, followed by a penis chaser in the form of a finger. That sounded weird, but I kind of like it, actually. I will allow it. Goose, flip the bird. Right in your goosey face. Honk, honk, honk. But not like this goose. Honk. The main point is people find this offensive. Some classic photographs of famous people given the finger. Classic. 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 Side note. I don't know if you know this, but I'm originally Australian. And when I was a kid, this was the most offensive thing you could do. Australia, colony of once again, hoot the Brits. Ooh, nobody likes it yet, it goes on and on. Honk. Honk. Ooh. Up yours. I got in so much trouble once from my mum doing that to my brother through the window. This was American. This was punk. This is my people. Anyway, birds. Is this a bird back in Russia? This is my people now. Now my whole post was based on this bird and actual birds. I stitched them seamlessly together because it's more about the theme than the writing. Although the writing is exceptional. You should, you should go read it. Please, I'll summarize. See these? Bird cages. Make a little bird house in your soul. Every fist on every arm holds a bird. The power of plumage is in this fist. Bird. And you never know what kind of bird you're going to need for the situation at hand. Literally, at hand. The point of the post was, there's a bird for every occasion. I want a bird, bird, bird. A bird away. The occasion being something that's stopping your creative process, that's making it hard for you to continue on, whether it's a blockage, whether it's an internal thing that's just emotionally draining you and you cannot move on. Like The only way that you can move past these things is to flip the mental bird at them. Got it. Basically, it is my belief that a bird released from your fist is a mental fuck you to anything that is halting your progress, slowing you down, blocking the flow of the completion of your art. And once that bird flies, and is delivered, you are able to move past the blockage. These are lofty concepts you might not be able to understand. I don't understand. But basically you get to like release a lot of birds. So in the post I used a couple of situational uh, examples of things that you might be stuck in and the different uh, caged birds that you could release upon that situation. Oh no, it's not, it's just a bird. And the first example I used was traffic. <laughs> Because if there's one place birds fly freely, it's in a traffic jam or when you're stuck behind a car or when someone's not using their indicator. You've apparently never used your blinkers. Windows come down and birds fly free. So too, the creative traffic jam, the getting stuck in slow lanes, the debris upon the road, the missing of the off-ramp, the stuck in the crawl. <laughs> The second one I used was um, if you're halted in your creative process by the harsh words of a critic or feedback that was unasked for. There's a bird for that. A bird. And the third situation I used was the internal one where you've lost all motivation and you're just somewhat inert. You're unable to do anything. Not inspired. Please my bullet.
there's a bird for that too. Basically, I was positing that for each situation, there was a fist bird you could release that would contain the spirit of the best bird suited to that situation. Let me give an example. Situation one, the traffic jam, the anger, the road rage. What kind of bird do you think you should flip in that one? You wouldn't flip a canary. Canary would be useless. You wouldn't flip a little robin. You wouldn't do a peacock. Peacock strutting around would be the point of that. No, what you need is a bird of prey. You need a bird that can eviscerate, that can fly down with talons out and beak sharp and just rip out the entrails of those who do not use their indicators, metaphorically. You need the hawk bird. Hawk flies in a screeching and a screaming, tears on in as a vicious fuck you to whomever is in your way. Bear in mind that sometimes you get in your own way, so you might have to flip the hawk bird to yourself happens. The hawk is delivered to anyone who stands in the way of your creative progress. Ha ha! Raptorous. Yes, I said raptor. This rapturous removal of the blockages incites rapturous progress. See what I did there? <sighs> I should just give up. Plumage of the fist. The second situation I mentioned was to do with critics or unwanted feedback. I figured that kind of bird would need to be one that is as annoying, as irritating as the critic themselves. And that bird, ladies and gentlemen, is the seagull. Obvious. Rats of the sea sky. Flip a seagull and that thing will swoop on in and steal back all those confidence chips that the critique stole from your plate. Seagull got it. And as I said in the piece, as it flies away, the seagull, this bird, dumps some feedback of its own. Metaphorically. If you're getting a lot of just shitty feedback from people, look them in the eye. And you don't have to actually be like raising your fists to do them, but mentally hurl some birds in their direction. Make them seagulls. Make them real annoying. Now the third kind of bird that I had in the piece was the duck, specifically the mallard. Basically I just needed a bird that would be perfect for a crisis of motivation. You know, a lack of movement. Or a sitting duck. One that you could flip at your own laziness, at your own self-doubt as a way of jolting yourself out of the funk. Fuck you, get off this couch. Fuck you, go sit at your desk. Fuck you, finish editing this podcast. That kind of thing. And could there be a more perfect water bird than the duck to say fuck you? Autocorrect changes the word fuck to duck which is, I guess, because it's foul language? I don't know. That was a happy accident, though. But it wasn't just that the mallard was the perfect don't give a duck bird. It's that it is the perfect avian uh, representative of the looking like doing nothing while having something going on beneath the duck. When you're just sitting around doing nothing, you're very still like the duck on the surface of a glassy pond. Very much looks like you're not doing anything. Is he asleep? But you can't see what lies beneath. What lies beneath is its little webbed feet paddling away in the water, changing the direction. So too, you, inert being lying there thinking you're being lazy, having no motivation. There's a lot going on in here. So you have to give yourself the duck you to snap yourself out of it, to remind yourself that beneath the surface, it's all action with you. Flip the bird at yourself. It might not work, but it sure is satisfying to do this. Give it a go. Maybe you're doing it at the screen right now. To me, I accept your birds. The duck, don't give a duck. Now duck off, mother ducker. I only really covered off on three use cases for three different kinds of fist birds in the piece. But there's a whole range of fist birds that you can uh, get your ornithologist birdwatching uh, binoculars out for. Chirp, chirp. Does it achieve anything flipping a bird, a metaphorical mental bird, at these blockages? Mm, not practically. 
But there's something uh, mentally positive about geeing yourself up to move past blockages by just giving yourself a talking to and sometimes flipping yourself the bird. That'll do it. Or flipping the bird at all those things that are like annoying you about the process. Ole. It's an emotional release to flip one just willy nilly into the air. It's me expressing myself. There's a kind of joy to that. It's like an interpretive dance of some kind. Interpretive! It's the release of uh, bad energy. That's the value of the birds in your fists. But it's fun to think what kind of bird you need, what kind of plumage is going to shoot forth from this fist, the bird. Polly want a cracker? I really did flip the bird a lot today. No regrets. Um, bird of prey, seabird, songbird, waterbird, wader, the power of the plumage in the centre of your fist. Pick a bird, get to flipping, get to ducking work. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and uh, I'll see you next week.